breakups can be ugly. There can be a lot of shouting, a lot of emotions, maybe even some salty messages. But this breakup has taken it to the next level. It involves fighter jets, airstrikes and terrorism. I'm talking about Pakistan and the Taliban. They're both clashing again. The Taliban says Pakistan bombed two Afghan areas. The first was Barmal in the Paktika province. The second was Sepera in Khost. Now, both provinces border Pakistan. The Taliban says Pakistani planes flew in at around 3 a.m. local time, dropped bombs in two places, then flew back. And casualties? Around eight people have been killed. The Taliban claim that they were women and children. And what is Pakistan saying? Well, they have admitted to carrying out airstrikes, but not in Afghanistan. Islamabad says this operation was inside Pakistan. They claim eight terrorists were killed. Now, the motive is pretty clear. Pakistan suffered a terror attack over the weekend. A military post in Waziristan was attacked. Around seven soldiers were killed, and two of them were officers. Now, this attack was later claimed by a new terror group. It's called jaish e fursan e mohammad Pakistan says this group is based in Afghanistan, and the Taliban shields them. So, a response was always on the cards. A funeral for the slain Pakistani soldiers was held on Saturday. President Asif Ali Zardari and Army Chief Asim Munir attended it. Both men appeared quite involved. Take a look at this. मैं आपसे यह वादा करता हूं कि यह मेरे बेटों का खून रागा नहीं जाएगा और हम इस खून का हिराज लेंगे इनसे सबसे हिराज लेंगे पाकिस्तान ने यह तय कर लिया है कि जो भी हमारे सरदों पे या हमारे घर में आके या हमारे मुल्क में आके जो भी टेररिज्म करेगा हम उसका मुंह तोड़ जवाब देंगे so there was a warning. Pakistan's president hinted at a military response, and 24 hours later, it came. But how is the Taliban reacting to it? Their statement makes for an interesting read. Let me quote from what the Taliban has said. We have a long experience of freedom struggles against superpowers. We do not allow anyone to invade our country. This is the Taliban saying. Pakistan should not blame Afghanistan for the lack of control incompetence and problems in its own territory. How about that? The Taliban says Pakistan is incompetent. And it's not just words. They are hitting back militarily too. There were reports of a gunfight near the border. Apparently, the Taliban fired at Pakistani military targets. So it's a cycle of tit-for-tat attacks. But how did things descend to this level? And what happens next? Let's go all the way back to 2021. Pakistan supported the Taliban's conquest of Kabul. They urged the global community to work with the Taliban to give them aid. But soon the equation changed. Pakistan needed the Taliban's help to contain the TTP. That's the Harike Taliban Pakistan, basically the Pakistani Taliban. Their goal is to establish an Islamic caliphate in the country. How? By toppling the current regime. But these Taliban have ethnic ties. Most of their rank and file are Pashtuns. So Pakistan hoped the Taliban would use their influence, maybe reign in the TTP, but the opposite has happened. A United Nations report has detailed this nexus. It says the Taliban is arming and funding the TTP. They're setting up training camps, giving them aid packages, and also shielding them from Pakistan. And the data supports this. Some 650 attacks were reported last year. They killed almost 1,000 Pakistanis. Around 93% of these attacks were in two provinces, Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. And what's special about them? Both provinces border Afghanistan. So you can join the dots here. The Taliban is giving a safe haven to the TTP. And what has Pakistan done about it? In 2022, they launched similar airstrikes. Around 47 Afghans were killed in the bombing. Then Afghan refugees were deported. There are 4 million of them in Pakistan. Around 1.7 million were ordered to leave. Again, the idea was to build pressure on Kabul, but no luck. Finally, Pakistan complained to, to the United Nations. They asked the United Nations Thank Security you. Council to act against the Taliban. 
Again, no luck. Because the international community has moved on. They may criticize and condemn, but they're not coming to save Pakistan, which raises the question, what next? Well, this Pakistani regime looks weak. The civilian government is deeply unpopular and the army's foothold has eroded. In January, the Iranians flew into Pakistani airspace. They bombed a border town in the West. So the regime had to send a message, a strong and symbolic message that Pakistan is capable of defending itself. Hence this airstrike on Afghanistan. At the same time, they may not want an escalation. Why else would they deny striking inside Afghanistan? So the next move is the Taliban's. They have a lot of options to choose from. The easiest would be another proxy attack to unleash the TTP again. But either way, it's a lesson for Pakistan's generals. They backed the Afghan Taliban as good terrorists. They fought the Pakistani Taliban as bad terrorists. And now look at them. Both good and bad have joined hands. And together, they're bleeding Pakistan. I'm afraid Islamabad is alone in this battle, not because the world doesn't care about terrorism. We do. But because Pakistan is responsible for this mess. Their deep state funded and armed terror groups. There's no point complaining now.